The recent success of the U.S. Army's Integrated Battle Command System, or IBCS, marks a turning point in the evolution of modern air and missile defense. During a live-fire test conducted on October 2, 2025, at White Sands Missile Range, soldiers from the 3rd Battalion, 43rd Air Defense Artillery Regiment, intercepted two maneuvering cruise missiles using the network system. Both targets were destroyed on the first intercept attempt, a remarkable result that validates the long years of development behind the IBCS program. For the Army, the event was not merely a test, it was proof that its next-generation command and control network can operate under real-world, contested conditions and deliver the kind of responsiveness future conflicts will demand. At its core, the IBCS serves as the command and control brain of the Army's integrated air and missile defense architecture. Unlike traditional systems, which rely on a single radar and fire control center tied to a specific launcher, IBCS connects a web of sensors, launchers, and command nodes into one coherent network. Through this architecture, any radar can detect a threat, and any connected launcher can engage it, following the, any sensor, best weapon, principle. This means that information from diverse sources, Patriot radars, the new lower-tier air and missile defense sensor, LTMDS, sentinel radars, and even allied systems, can be combined into a single, high-fidelity view of the airspace. The result is faster decision-making, improved situational awareness, and a higher probability of intercept against sophisticated aerial threats. The October test provided a vivid demonstration of how IBCS transforms traditional air defense operations. When the cruise missile targets approached, the system fused tracking data from multiple sensors to build a unified air picture. Instead of relying on one radar to maintain contact with the target, the IBCS combined information from several nodes, ensuring stable tracking even as the missiles maneuvered at low altitude. The software then evaluated the available launchers and automatically selected the most effective interceptors, Patriot Pack 3 CRI missiles in this case. The engagement orders were transmitted instantly over the network, leading to two successful kills. Such seamless coordination across multiple systems highlights the network's power to outpace and outsmart complex threats. The exercise also validated the resilience of IBCS in an electronically contested environment. Modern adversaries invest heavily in jamming and deception technologies meant to disrupt radar coverage and communication links. To simulate these realities, the Army designed the test with strong electronic warfare interference. Even under these conditions, IBCS maintained connectivity, continued to process accurate target data, and executed precise engagements. This resilience demonstrates one of the system's greatest strengths, its ability to adapt dynamically. If one sensor or relay fails, others automatically compensate. If a segment of the network is jammed, the system reroutes data through alternate pathways. In short, it can fight through disruption, something legacy systems cannot easily achieve. Beyond its technological achievements, IBCS also changes how soldiers operate in the field. Traditional air defense batteries were static and vulnerable. Their radars, command posts, and launchers were typically positioned close together, making them easier targets for enemy strikes. IBCS allows these elements to be dispersed over large distances while still functioning as a single, integrated defense unit. A radar might be placed on high ground for better visibility, a launcher hidden in a valley for protection, and the command post kept mobile or concealed elsewhere. The system's network links all components together, allowing engagements to occur regardless of distance or terrain. This flexibility significantly enhances survivability and operational agility in modern battlefields. The system's open and modular design further ensures that it can evolve as new technologies emerge. The software architecture of IBCS allows new sensors, radars, and weapons to be integrated without redesigning the entire system. This has already been proven through successful demonstrations involving the LTMDS radar, 
which is being introduced as a next-generation replacement for existing Patriot radars, and through experiments linking IBCS with Allied and Joint Systems. Fifth-generation fighter jets, for example, can share sensor data with ground networks, expanding the overall defensive picture. European allies have also participated in demonstrations, connecting their ground-based radars to the IBCS framework. Although foreign sensors may not yet be authorized to control firing decisions, they can contribute valuable data to the common air picture, reinforcing coalition interoperability. This networked approach directly supports U.S. strategic goals in Europe and the Indo-Pacific, where air and missile threats are rapidly increasing. In Europe, low-flying cruise missiles and long-range drones have become more common, demanding faster and more coordinated responses. In the Pacific, the U.S. is developing a layered defense for Guam, a critical outpost vulnerable to ballistic and cruise missile attacks. In both regions, IBCS is viewed as the command and control backbone that will link sensors and interceptors from different services and allies into a unified defensive web. As the Army begins low-rate initial production and early fielding of IBCS across air defense brigades, these global defense networks are becoming a reality. The implications of the October 2 test reach far beyond the immediate success of intercepting two targets. The event confirms that IBCS can handle the types of fast, low-flying, and maneuverable threats that will dominate future conflicts. Cruise missiles and advanced drones often fly under radar coverage, using terrain and speed to mask their approach. Traditional systems struggle to maintain track continuity against such threats. By combining data from multiple angles and frequencies, IBCS overcomes this limitation, ensuring uninterrupted custody of the target from detection to destruction. This capability is essential for modern warfare, where seconds often decide the outcome of an engagement. Another significant advantage of IBCS lies in resource efficiency. Interceptors such as Patriot Pack 3 missiles are costly and limited in number. The ability to identify the best firing solution and avoid redundant launches saves ammunition while maintaining effectiveness. During the October exercise, the Army reported that the first two shots were sufficient to neutralize the threats, eliminating the need for additional engagements. This efficiency will become increasingly critical as nations face swarms of inexpensive drones and cruise missiles designed to exhaust their defensive stocks. IBCS also symbolizes a philosophical shift in how the U.S. approaches air defense. In the past, each weapon system was a standalone entity, operating within its own boundaries. The new approach treats every asset, radar, launcher, or sensor, as part of a larger networked ecosystem. This shift not only enhances performance but also mirrors broader trends in digital warfare, where data integration, artificial intelligence, and automation are redefining combat operations. The ability to coordinate multiple systems in real time and to do so autonomously under human supervision is a step toward a more connected and intelligent battlefield. Looking forward, the Army's focus is on expanding IBCS fielding and refining its interoperability with other services and allied nations. The goal is a fully integrated defense network that can counter a spectrum of threats, from short-range drones to hypersonic missiles. The system's open architecture ensures that future technologies, including directed energy weapons and new radar types, can be incorporated without major redesigns. Such adaptability makes IBCS not just a system for today, but a foundation for decades of evolution in air and missile defense. The successful live-fire test at White Sands thus stands as a powerful validation of both concept and capability. It shows that the U.S. Army's vision for a networked, sensor-fused, and resilient air defense is not just theoretical, it is operational. With its ability to connect sensors across domains, coordinate weapons across units, and maintain functionality under attack, IBCS represents a decisive leap in defensive warfare. As threats continue to multiply and evolve, systems like IBCS will determine whether future armies can defend their forces and territories effectively. The October intercepts may seem like a small event on the surface, 
but they marked the dawn of a new era in integrated defense, one where data, connectivity, and speed will be as crucial as the missiles themselves.